it is family in the front, tie net and those slit and long sleeves. Party in the back. A scoop neck back revealing more tattoos, scars, self-harm scars. That spine. I pull on a vintage black velvet jacket to hide that eyesore. Black leather trench coat because it's freezing. Oh, the Bahamut earrings for that extra satanic zing as Miss Mead desires. Aunt Sandy drives me to my other aunt and uncle's house. I peer at the passing dirt top mansions. Wreaths on the black bird she carried. Feel the scotch tape on my nipples because I still don't for backless dress. Look down at my knee-high combat boot, crossed daintily in the well of Sandy's car, keeping my chilly feet in warm arrangement. I smear red lipstick over a massive place or Who am I kidding? Not them. My family will all be in my dinner clothes as usual. I will sit there like a charity countess with my hand-me-down and gifted finery. Finery, allowance is a damn thing about it. Ada Satanus invoca Azazel, ascendit pallid disabit. In English, hail Satan. Evoke demon Azazel, arise, cursed be. On Thanksgiving, I muster penance for the great curse of America, which cannot now be undone. America was never great. America was founded on the annihilation of tribe. I am but one of thousands who were birthed by the deaths of those that held this land before. Tonight we must feast on turkey and stuffing, as is traditionally ordained. Are we devouring tryptophan, souls, or complicit guilt for the land that we squat? Remaining silent and docile about it is harder and harder. Every year it is a harder pill to swallow than any in my bottles. Perhaps there will be only merrymaking as we, mixed colonizers and Latinos, pour gravy over genocide with blood inscribed deep in a silver tureen. I know the cruel history of Thanksgiving, it shames and horrifies me. The curse from my madness and mental illness comes deep within my ancestral DNA. I don't blame my genetic mental illness on an ancient curse put on my long ago ancestral milestander, as I once did. Makes a great story. But the past is lost to us now. Many generations of breeding and spawn birthed me. Mental illness is on both paternal and maternal sides of my family tree. Genetic mental illness is not a curse or shamanism, just science. We arrive at my aunt and uncle's house for a meal as unholy seeming as American Horror Story Apocalypse's Black Mass. We will not be dining by ripping the hearts from sacrificed innocence to summon Satan. Christ is only televised. 
The devil does not exist. He has a plastic cameo on my Etsy earrings. Evil is in mankind alone. My family is not evil. Or mine. My dear extended family is most certainly not headed by any antichrist. Uncle Jim cooks Thanksgiving dinner all day, every year, with his trademark culinary panache. Everything from this kitchen is gold. I am a flutter with lights ahead. As I open the glass door, my contributions are in my purse. Mini book shape Christmas gifts. No one will wonder why. I flailed. Had to pick up my clonopin instead of baking the pumpkin pie I had promised. Muscled through benzodiazepine, benzodiazepine withdrawal. For the third time this year. I knew that's fatal, right? So, it gets in the way of homemade baked goods when you can't get out of bed. Is it sacrilege to find my aunt's garlic cashews from Gilroy Delicious, to find my other aunt delightful as she tells a story about the joys of staying off of social media. I don't know. I compartmentalize. My family has nothing to do with the origins of Thanksgiving. They, like me, were just born here about 70 years ago and are just trying to live. Their joy and conviviality lifts me to a better place than these dark origin thoughts. With these set outs, floral china in the dining room for a buffet. I never use it at its Thanksgiving. Why not? She says. I have to agree. The same. Usual Sunday dinner crowd clusters and crops. No wild crowds here. What was I thinking with my bulletproof anthem? I am safe here for the biggest little holiday feast. I load a plate up with succulent dark meat turkey. Two kinds of stuffing. One paleo for my uncle. One traditional bread for my cousin-in-law, who met familial cooking expectations so much better than I did. Her homemade chocolate chip cookies sit next to my sad Rayleigh's pie box on the bar. Although the red wine is flowing, it is invisible to sober me. Having downed a cold grapefruit soda, I've gotten stoned at the bills beforehand. I had Ruthie's trademark pea salad, a Thanksgiving tradition. Scoop creamy mashed potatoes, pour gravy over. Despite Satan on my ears, curses on my lips, my dearly departed grandma's black veil is lifted. I left the grieving wedding rings at home. Caroline remains. All is merry and bright. Somehow, I think not of the dead, but the living. Their vibrant chatter around me as we gather in the dining room. I eye over hors d'oeuvres is awash with hashtag Thanksgiving clapbacks and tips on avoiding Toxic conversations and difficult questions from baby boomer relatives about being a mother or being on disability. But because I see these three generations of families so often, they understand already all aspects of my peculiar situation. 
see no need to pry uncomfortable in what they already know. It is not their practice. Aunt Ruthie has reassured me that she doesn't like asking people uncomfortable questions. I too do not like asking people questions I would not want asked of myself, so I do not. Other than grunts and exclamations of delight, the Thanksgiving table is peaceful as the blankets of snow on the Sierras. My toddler second cousin does his usual weird food bingo as to what he will eat. We do not say grace. We do not reflect on the origins of Thanksgiving because we all know the terror, blood, and horror underscoring this feast. Or are too young to know, like this innocent child here. I tuck into my second helping of turkey, stuffing, and pea salad. The cold pea globes pop beneath my teeth to reveal green health give inside. My aunt lifts her wine glass. Toasts, I'm thankful for my family this Thanksgiving. My uncle on the other side lifts his wine. I lift my water. We all seem to feel that this is our real reason for being here. No, I know, that does not absolve any white guilt for the stolen land in which our homes are built upon. We are trying to eat. Now is not the place for me to cast blame on them for what I am also. Aunt Sandy limps, lifts my empty plate away to be washed by a living family friend. The conversation turns to things learned young and remembered forever. I remarked to my uncle that the last verse of the Robert Frost poem, Walking by Woods on a Snowy Evening, is engraved upon my brain. I had to memorize it in seventh grade. The lines have touched my soul many times on Insomniac Deadline. A jazz musician behind his day job, my uncle is an artist too. Has kept similar, similar long hours to rehearse his saxophone. Knows the poem. Remarks that its resonance gives it that longevity. I agree. We repeat the verse together, bloodlessly yet bound by bloodline, to remember again. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep, Robert Frost.